Welcome everyone to my review of IDW Sonic issue 40 and the final part of Test Run. Before we see how Evan Stanley's second story arc ends, let's recap the events of the previous issue and there will be spoilers from this point forward. Tango and Bell snuck around Eggman's tower for answers to the latter's origins. They captured Orbot and Cubot, and after seeing Sonic, Tails, and Amy in the test chambers, Tango planned on heading in to pull them out. Good thing because Eggman himself has taken control of the chambers, and forced the trio into one where they face off against four elemental variations of the Egg Viper. While they destroyed the electric variant, they still have to contend with the fire, water, and wind variants simultaneously. As much as Eggman loves torturing Team Sonic, he's got stuff to do, so he's going to flat out kill them. He says he'll make it quick while he prepares the Fire Viper to burn Amy and Tails. Time for Sonic to play some elemental rock, paper, scissors. He tricks the Water Viper to hose down the Fire Viper, then, with help from Amy's hammer, he uses the Wind Viper's win to increase his momentum and smash into the Water Viper. Unfortunately, the trio have nothing they can use against the Wind Viper. Cue the timely arrival of Tangle. Back in the tower, Bell, Orbot, and Cubot are having a chit chat about their robotic natures and Eggman in general. The doctor calls to yell at Orbot and Cubot about Tangle's interference when he sees Bell instead. Here we go. He recognizes his own construction in Bell allowing him to remember that he did build her while he was Mr. Tinker. While he wants to go back to destroying Sonic, Bell has one question. Why? Why are you doing this? Seeing that Bell cared for his goody-goody self, he decides to explain why he's doing all this via exposition. Get comfy, everyone. Eggman's ego has gotten so enormous, he feels tinkering within the confines of the ordinary world no longer suits him. So he created the tower where he can do all sorts of things like infinity mazes as traps, how fast Batniks can overrun towns, and new evolving Batniks to dominate the target environment. He then asks what makes Mr. Tinker, a mere toy maker in his eyes, worthy of her admiration compared to Eggman's unrestrained genius. You won't get an answer, Eggman, because Bell drops and breaks the pad in shock and sadness. There is another problem. The gate is overloading because, as Orbot explains, an object, like Tangle's tail for instance, left in the energy field for too long would cause a feedback loop, which will then cause the energy field to expand until it collapses under its own weight and implodes. Heading back into the Viper fight, Eggman set the machines to autopilot so he can talk to Bell. This gives the heroes a chance to really wail on them. The moment the dock regains control, they decide it's time to go. They head back to the tower through Tangle's portal, however, the damage is done. The energy fields continuing to expand, which mean implosion is imminent. After Sonic asks Orbot for the quickest way out, everyone grabs onto him and he boosts straight to the landing bay. They fly away just as the tower implodes into nothingness, and Eggman gets a bit of a zap. On the plane, the group tries to figure out what to do with Orbot and Cubot. Bell says, just let them go. They aren't the ones responsible for this. And they just toss them off the plane. Orbot and Cubot are fine with this, by the way. They need a little break away from their boss. With that bit of comedy over, it's time to get serious. Bell confesses that she was made by Mr. Tinker, and when he disappeared, she didn't want to believe that he was the villainous Dr. Eggman all along even though people kept telling her that. She thought she can get through to him by talking, but as we saw, it didn't work out. Time for Counselor Tangle to do her thing. She tells Belle that she did some good today, and that her dad would have been proud. Tangle has a point, which I'll go into greater detail in the next section. For now, with the tower gone, there's no more storm, and the heroes head back to base under clearer weather. This arc ended on a bittersweet note. On the one hand, the tower and all the experiments inside are destroyed, so they can't threaten the world. And I don't know about you, but the tower's destruction reminded me of the ending to Poltergeist. However, unless Eggman had only enough materials to build one tower, 
What's to stop him from building another one in the future and resuming the experiments? Especially if he saved all that data in his man cave. Unless the implosion fried all of his computers. Personally, I like the idea of altered forms of past machines and the monster badniks themselves. And I hope they show up in the future. The bitterness also comes in the form of Belle's journey. She got her answer, and it was heartbreaking to find that the man who built her was essentially a facade. A creation through a magic stone-induced case of amnesia. What made it worse was, the whole time we've seen her, she was in denial. She couldn't believe Mr. Tinker was really Eggman all along. That's why she was quiet about it until the pivotal moment where she heard an unrestrained egomaniac that was once her dad. This revelation is almost as bad as when Luke Skywalker learned the truth about his father. Unlike that story, talking did not get the villain to reconsider his actions. Eggman will continue his world-conquering crusade and find ways to defeat Sonic once and for all. I wouldn't be surprised if the next issue featured Sonic and Eggman in yet another fight. Oh, um, okay. The only thing we didn't get about Belle is, when was she built? She knew about Sonic's visit in issues 5 and 6, but Tinker could have told her later on. And it's implied to be before Rough and Tumble kidnapped him. Truth is, we may never know for sure, but that could change down the line. Now unless Eggman gets hit on the head hard, or there's cloning, or other scientific or magical means, chances are, Mr. Tinker is gone for good. You can ultimately thank these two for that, but at least his legacy will live on through Bell. Tangle was right in that she did do some good, in an unexpected way. She was a spanner in the tower operation, or at least, she brought the spanner along. If she hadn't recruited Tangle to take them to the tower, they would have never captured Orbine Cubot, Tangle would never have rescued Team Sonic, while inadvertently causing an implosion during said rescue. Funny. Tango used her tail at the beginning of the arc to stop a minor disaster at Restoration HQ. And now at the end, her tail caused a massive disaster for Eggman. No wonder he was angry at her sudden arrival. Tango is definitely becoming a thorn on Eggman's side, if he's starting to recognize her more. Now would it be possible for Team Sonic to escape if Tango and Belle had not arrived? I don't think so in this case. The previous issue illustrated that once Eggman knew they were in the tower, he took direct control of the chambers, and believe me, he had control. They tried their best against the variants, and the only reason they're not blown to Kingdom Come is Tangle dropping in. You can also thank Bell again because, remember, Eggman set the Vipers to autopilot to talk with her, and when we next see the four heroes, they're doing serious damage to the machines. Eggman must really have a terrible autopilot system. If I had one criticism, it would be with the art, especially with the beginning pages. Something feels off, like it needs to have more shadow effects, a stronger outline, and consistent coloring. Compare this to the later Viper scenes, and you can see it looks a lot better. The reason is, not only are there multiple artists, there are multiple colorists, and multiple inkers. I'm used to different artists on a single book at this point, but I hope the colors could try and match their styles a little. Make it less jarring. Perhaps this is something that can be fixed before the eventual trade paperback release. If by some chance any of the creators see this, I apologize for being critical, but I want some consistency in a visual medium. As for the arc as a whole, I like it. Like I said, it had ideas that I hope come back in the future, it had Team Sonic in a rough situation. We see Eggman's sadistic side again. Believe me, he was having fun torturing his test subjects. And we got some resolution on Belle. Moving forward, I hope she finds happiness with new friends and a sense of belonging. She's already making progress with this bunch. And I think we can all agree, she needs a massive hug. If I were to take anything away from Evan's time as head writer, she does character bits a little better than Ian, and I hope she does more stories in the future. Speaking of Ian Flynn, he'll make his return to the main book in issue 41, which will also see the return of the Deadly Six. More on that next time. See you then. Okay, based on this panel of them leaving the tower, and this final panel of them here, 
I think Tango might have tossed Orban Cubot into the water. Have fun vacationing under the sea, you two.